uh, when you bring the voice from outside the forest, uh, sometimes the trees can grow taller. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? So we're bringing another voice into the house, and it's been Velo. Rob Sanchez is another voice to this house. And so we have, God has given us men of God who have called us. Where, listen to me. This is significant. Last year, I think it was in the summer, Velo says, the Lord showed me that there would be an exponential increase and that this would be a kingdom center and that there would be, come on, he spoke it all into being. And, and we experienced the, the first fruits of that word yesterday. We experienced that. We saw, we saw the word, listen to me, manifest right before our eyes explicitly in every detail where the prophet spoke. Has man didn't look, we didn't have to wait till we died. It has manifested while yet we're still living. Every word of the prophet came to pass. I'm going, wow. And then, <laughs> wow. And so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I want to introduce to you and present to some, uh, all the way from Sweden, the prophet Bello Bain. Hallelujah. Yes, it's so good. I'm on, right? <laughs> yes, now I can hear myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a special day today. I also had a very special night or early morning. Uh, I didn't know. It, it was not because of my skin rash this time. I stayed awake until 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I asked God, I need to sleep. You need to hear what I have to say today. It's, yeah. And he spoke to me, have you forgotten what kind of day it is today? And I tried to remember, yes, it's Palm Sunday. And it was 23 years ago on a Palm Sunday, I walked in. That's the only city I walked into. I didn't come by airplane or boat or car. I walked into the city. I also walked through this area, Santa Clara, and we, we stayed in some churches and so on and walked for 40 days. But the message is not about that. I believe in the right word, in the right time, in the right place. So I, I know that God wants to speak to you. And I want to speak about the prophetic perspective of Palm Sunday, prophetic perspective of Palm Sunday, and it's important to understand what it is, because it's, it's uh, if you go back, Palm Sunday is just a week before Easter, or you say a Passover, I rather say, use that word, you know, how, and God spoke to me how easy it is to say Hosanna, Hosanna when your own expectancy you have an expectancy of that Messiah will come the way you think he will come the king will come the way you think he will come that he will come from the outside and in Palm Sunday it's about how could it happen that it was a change within a week from Hosanna, Hosanna to crucify, crucify. We need to understand that Jesus, through our beloved Father, sent his Son to save us. And the, the, the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. Luke 19, verse 10. When, when we see this, from the Palm Sunday perspective, it's not only that he came in, you know, that's a miracle in itself. I, I asked uh, another um, minister in Sweden, she is a, prof, uh, a prophet as well, uh, but, and, and she loved donkeys, you know. And how could Jesus rode on a donkey, not ridden on before? You, you understand? I don't speak English here. 
And that's a miracle, you know, that's a master's donkey. It's, it's supposed to happen. It, it w will happen now. And, and uh, they, 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 with palm leaves, we walked in with palm leaves in San Francisco because you have palm leaves here <laughs> in California. We don't have that in Sweden. <laughs> and welcome the king. And, and it has been, uh, by the way, there's been so many things with uh, San Francisco, confrontations, uh, with prayer, and everything. But God spoke to me, it, it will be houses of prayer. And Jesus, you know, when Jesus came in to Jerusalem, it was celebration. And it was Hosanna, and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You know? But still, the expectancy was their own way because Jesus, let me say that, when Jesus came riding on a donkey, you know, he came to the, was no stoplight, but it was kind of a stop sign in the spirit of expectancy. What will happen now? Two alternatives. From the outside and in, he will, of course, to go to Pilate's palace. You understand the, the, the governor over from the Roman Empire? You know? That's what they expected the Messiah would, would take over because he had the strength, he had the power, and we need some. That's our expectancy on Messiah. But he took another turn. He went to the temple, and after that, and drove out the money changer. And, and you see, when he did that, everything started to change from Hosanna to Hosanna, Hosanna, and after, within a week, it's crucified, crucified. You see, uh, it's often, it is like that when something happens, the way we don't expect it, but you see, I saw Jesus. I saw through the Holy Spirit that he will. I go a little bit ahead of my message because it, this is an important message. He will go to the temple even today. And he draw out the money changers, and you have done it to a den of What's the, I have to exercise my English. Den of thieves and robbers, right? By my father's house will be a house of prayer. A house of pray, prayer. And a house of praise. And a house of, of, of power and healing. But he needs to drive out the money changers. You know, we are the temple of God today. What Jesus did, if you read from Matthew 21, 22, 23, 24, I will soon read Matthew 24 because God spoke to me about this really. Uh, it is coming against the system of to clean everything from the outside and in, you know, to, to do things in a certain way. It was not God's way. And, and, and it was a seal. It's even written in the Bible. I have to read, since I usually read my Swedish Bible, I have to read some expressions in, in the English Bible. So I was not so prepared to say this, but I'm prepared in the spirit. I know it's the right word. We are in a shift, you see. We need to understand the shift is not worship programs from the outside and in. We need to have real worshipers in spirit and truth. We need to have people connected in the spirit who can hear God. Last year, God reminded me this early morning that I was supposed to go to a place, and God said to me, said to me it is not prepared. They are not ready. They don't have the same ear. They cannot hear what, what you hear in the spirit. So I have to pray about it, and I was connected with another place, and they have they had the same ear to hear what the Holy Spirit said. Sometimes you don't hear what the Holy Spirit says because you want to do your own thing. You want to do it in your own way. You don't want to do it your way, but you need to do it the king's way. 
But Jesus used everything. He went to the cross to prepare a place for you. So even when they cried out, crucify, crucify, of course God used that. But he's after your mind. He's after your heart. He wants to see a change in you. So when you come to the stoplight that he did in Jerusalem, he came to the stoplight and said, shall it be a right turn or a left turn? Will he go to Pilate's palace? Of course, you know, when, when, when it came later on to that point, and they asked, even Pilate asked, are you a king? And Jesus didn't deny that, right? He is a king. Of course, he is a king. So Jesus is a king. You said, right. But my kingdom is not of this world. And Pilate continued and say, don't you know that I have the power to set you free? You don't have any power if it's not given to you from above. I can ask just the legion to, of angels to sweep out, and that was English, <laughs> weep out <laughs> the whole army. It was nothing for Jesus to just say a word. Amen? Do you understand? So he had the power. And do you understand that some understood that Jesus had the power when he cast out the legion of evil spirits, we did the miracles? He has the power. Of course he can knock out Pilate. Of course he can take over. Many of you know that he will take over. He could take over. Oh, God, I know you can if you will. Do you know, want to know God's will? You need to have a listening ear. You need to hear from God. When you hear from God, it is from above and down. It's from the inside and out. It's a new government. It's not a government with flesh power. It is a government with spirit power. The days should be over when the church use soul power. That's manipulation. They need to have spirit power. It need to be a flow in the spirit. When it's a flow in the spirit, the presence of God is there. Everything is possible. And everything will happen in this time. So many Christians today, I believe it has been a stop in God's kingdom kairos clock because they have expected Jesus to come with the rapture any minute, any time. And they are not prepared with the come. The spirit and the bride says come. And one who hears it says come. Are you ready to go into the process? Are you ready to be a temple? Are you ready to see that whip of the Holy Spirit of perfect love drive out the money changers in your life? So you will see. I saw it tonight. I saw it tonight. I saw a light come, you know, a Holy Spirit. I am praying. So I prayed. So when you pray and you are the house of prayer, he will drive out everything you are worried about, concerned about, you should not bother about. He will drive out fear in your life. Perfect love would cast out fear. Yes, perfect love. Can you imagine a whip of love? What kind of thing is that? A whip, well, I saw it. Hallelujah. A whip of perfect love. God is not after to punish you. He never do that. But, you know, he wants to go to the root problem. When you are called to be the house of prayer, you cannot operate in fear. You cannot op operate after the flesh. Or selfishness. You have to die from the sukkah life to invite the soe life. The flow from the throne. Eternal life. In time. You need to see eternity in time. Hallelujah. You see, when you are a welcoming temple. You see, the church today is like Jerusalem. The church when it's not really the bride, the, 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 you know, 
if you are not together in, let me read that. I need to read it in English so to quote it right. Hallelujah. Have I? Okay. Hallelujah. I'm so excited and uh, so I need <laughs> to drink a little water too. Yes, when you go to, uh, let us go there, Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. It was after the confrontation with the Pharisees and, and the disciples, they were still on that mindset and they pointed at the temple and they were shocked when Jesus said what he said about the physical temple. But we need to understand there's so many things because they for sure remember that Jesus, they break down this temple and I will rebuild it again within three days. It will be rebuilt. And they said, oh, this temple had been standing for 46 years, I believe it is, in the, in, in the uh, context here. So they understood, some of them understood, and actually no one understood that he will be resurrected. Not even the disciples, even if he said that. What I wanted to say is that it's a weeping over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, verse 37, Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you as children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wing, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to be desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And there is said again, it's a new Hosanna, right? It, it comes again. But in this time, you know, we need to understand the church, Jerusalem, must go through a change. And we're talking about the apostolic and the prophetic. Because here, Jerusalem killed the prophets and stoned those who were sent to it. That means the apostles. So when the church in a, this are not ready to receive the prophetic and apostolic dimension, you see, this is serious. Your house will be left to be desolate. We need to go deep enough to understand it. So we need to receive, even if it costs everything, you know, because it's not on our purpose, it's not on our deal, you know. We cannot go the, the way from the outside and in. We must go through the way the door is revelation. We must go the door through transformation. And that way we will see the manifestation. When you take the choice of Pilate's palace, you want to have manifestation first. You want to have things, you know, we don't like this Roman Empire. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's a system, so Jesus had to f face the religious system during the days. And that was Jerusalem, of course. And Jerusalem, of course, still have a calling it, the, the name in itself means peace. You see, it will be a change. And I prophesied also yesterday about this a shift coming. Can you see a shift when the church must welcome the, the prophetic and apostolic perspective? You see, we see a shift of people understand what is really to be born again. To be born again is all about to see the kingdom. How many see the kingdom when they are born again? When we see the kingdom, you see, 
That means that the eyes of your heart is open. So when God spoke to me about this scripture, I studied it a little bit deeper, and I find out why the reason Jesus says, you will not see me no more until you say Hosanna again. The word see is not first of all to see with your physical eyes. The word is oida, that means to see the, with the eyes of your heart, with deep observation in revelation. Amen. For me, it's very important. I'm a prophetic teacher, and, 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 and in this house you know that uh, I know even in Sweden, because I, you have to face a lot of things when you are, are, are at least 10 hours, uh, 10, 10 years, not hours, <laughs> ahead, you know. And I know some other missions. You don't say anything without quoting the word of God. No, I don't dare to do my own opinion and my own revelation. I, I have to have the revelation of the Holy Spirit. It must be the word of God. Amen. Don't believe me because I say it. Believe it because you hear the word say. Don't despise prophecy, but you need to hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we hear from the Holy, this is much, Apostle Cal, is this is much bigger than we think. I, I don't call him Pastor Cal today, I call him Apostle Cal. He is an apostolic father. That's what I picked up immediately in our first kingdom connection thing. We have prayed about it, and I know that that's so. Don't be afraid of the stones. Don't be afraid. You are protected. Don't be afraid of those try to kill the prophetic dimension because they cannot do it. It's a shift coming. Hallelujah. And Jerusalem. You know that Jerusalem, we need to understand when we speak about God as our father, and we can even say that Jesus is our big brother and things like that. And I, sometimes I ask like this, but who is our mother? And people. The Holy Spirit, they said. No, it's not written like that exactly. In Galatians chapter 4, I think it's 23 or 27, it says, The Jerusalem above is our mother. You understand? We have a mother. And, and, and the church in this should be like a mother church, you know, because Jerusalem above is our mother and is giving birth to her children in freedom, not slavery. I'm not so good in to quote everything in English, but since God spoke to me tonight, <laughs> that's the reason I usually need to prepare when it's up to the Scripture. I need more preparation with the English Bible. But I believe you can follow me, right? Hallelujah. So we need to see the perspective, the prophetic perspective of Palm Sunday. God wants to speak to us today so we can understand what time we live in. It will be a shift for sure, but in, with the shift also comes shakings. And we believe in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. It will remain for sure. And when we believe that, we are going through the process. Because if you don't have revelation that leads to transformation and leads to manifestation, you are lost. Because that's actually how Adam was called to live in the beginning. Because Eden was the manifestation and that was the present and it was the kingdom. And the Holy Spirit could not dwell with man anymore. He must come back. And for him to come back, Jesus must come. God must come in a physical body, die on a cross. So you have a connection point between heaven and earth. So the cross is the means to an end. And the end is not to go to heaven. The end is the kingdom. That's the reason why Jesus didn't go to heaven to prepare a place. He came from heaven to die on the cross on earth. So the lamb was crucified on earth to connect you with people. He was resurrected. He was ascended. And now he's seated on the Father's right hand side. So the dialogue in, in, in heaven, sit down on my, yes, watch out for the steps. <laughs> S 
sit down on my right hand side till I have put all your enemies as a footstool. So we are here just to hear what God says, to be a temple, and we are here just to finish the finish. So it's already finished. And Peter, I ask God, how can it be that the man who denied you 50 days earlier on the day of Pentecost said, now he is seated. And that's the reason why the Holy Spirit is poured out. Even Pentecostals, this is what I see. They see the manifestation of baptism in the Holy Spirit and think, but very few understand. I, I've been uh, teaching, I've been called to conferences for Pentecostals in, 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 in Scandinavia. And I ask them, what is the foundation of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And they can answer me. What is the foundation that you know that your sins are forgiven? Of course they know that Jesus Christ died on the cross. But how come that the Holy Spirit is poured out? Peter answered that question. Uh, Acts chapter two, uh, 2, I believe it's uh, around that 37 or 39 somewhere, because he is seated. And Peter quoted, Jesus quoted, Hebrew quoted, uh, was a dialogue in heaven, Psalm 110, verse 1. Sit down. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand side till I put all the enemies as the footstool. So when you see that, you have a foundation for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I am at Pentecost, so some of them for 40 years, they've been waiting for a kind of a hammer, you know. Uh, oh, I pray for be filled with the Holy Ghost. And they think something will happen. <laughs> No, you receive it by faith. And I ask them, I ask them how did you receive you <laughs> that you are saved? How do you know that you are saved? I just believed it. How will you know that you're filled with the Holy Ghost? Just believe it. If anyone is thirsty, <laughs> you need to be thirsty first. Let him come to me and drink. And the one who believes in me from his innermost being will throw rivers of living water. That means, you need to understand this, it's, it's quite simple, but people, when they have not seen it, you know, the cross is a means to an end. The kingdom is in the Holy Spirit. So when you believe that, you see, you, 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 you need to understand that he is seated, and you are seated with him. And the Holy Spirit is poured out, hallelujah. You can speak, not only speak in tongues, you can know, you can move in the Holy Spirit. You can rejoice in the Holy Spirit. You can do everything in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Everything that is impossible for you is possible in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I believe we are for sure in a shift of understanding. But the shift comes slowly too. If even shift, I have seen over and over again, that people think that things will happen. Sometimes I don't know what to do with it because I think, oh, God, he is sovereign and he will intervene and it will happen. And they're waiting on God the wrong way. You understand what waiting on God the wrong way is? That you think it will happen from the outside and in. Even to say, come, it's a process, not just the word. Are you ready to step into your come today? That means that you say you go into a process because it's the process in itself that guarantees the event. I write about that in my book. Because it has been so little teaching. I have gone to some places it taken years before I even understand a sentence of what I said. Not because of my Swingish, but just religion is so deep rooted <laughs> amen you understand what I say <laughs> so, so you see we, we need to be connected with the flow of revelation Jesus is the door 
Death is not the door. Jesus is the door. Do you know through that door is in your heart now, it's a lot of traffic going in and out. Do you know that through your soul, it's a lot of traffic all day long? And, 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 and you, Jesus is the door. And I ask people, who is the door opener? And they something, Father, they say, okay. No, it's, you are the door opener, but it's your born again spirit and your ability to hear God because he's standing and knocking at the door. And if anyone listen, he will open and I will come in and dine with him. Amen? So you see, revelation is a foundation. It's not any very spectacular, only a few prophets have revelation. I have a neighbor knocking at my door 11 o'clock on a Friday night. And he said, and he, what I know, he don't know the Lord, but he said, Oh, well, you have revelation, don't you? I was surprised, right? You have a neighbor. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Come in so we can talk. No, no, I have some guests over in my house. I need to go back to them. And But Pele, that's his name. He died just recently because he's a little bit older than I am. But he came back 20 knocked at the door. Well, you, you, you must have revelation, don't you? <laughs> and he came in, and I explained the scripture for him about Jesus. Yes, even I have an altar. Are you, and this must be supernatural, because he said, are you walking in the forest praying? So he picked up something. And even I have an altar. You, you need to understand people. They, they, they say things in, in the forest. And I, 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 uh, I even walk sometimes with a vicar. Is that what you say? When it's the Memorial Lutheran kind of priest or, yeah. The vicar, yeah, okay. But, but, but it, it's not so much revelation. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny how people <laughs> are out there, you know. And our, our, I don't take the time to the, I know Ingalis' testimony. We have prayed for another neighbor so close to death in cancer. He is healed, and now he's smiling. I say, you cannot leave too long, because when you leave, yeah, I got sick again, he said. <laughs> you know, it's like when you are, they don't know the Lord, and you are like a priestly function in, on the street, right? Yeah, you have to see that, too. We are a royal priesthood. We are supposed to... Pray for our neighbor. Amen. So, so you see, what I want to say this morning is that God wants you to have the door of revelation. And you need to guard the traffic through your mind. And you need to see that you have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. A carnal mindset will lead to death. But the mind of Christ and renewed mindset will lead to life and peace in God. And the so air life from the throne room of God will flow through you. Because Jesus came in a human body. Incarnation means that he was uh, Emmanuel. God is in a human body. And that's the reason he said, I am a temple. Destroy this temple, and it would be rebuilt in within three days. Do you understand? The point is not your church program. It is that you are the temple of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said it will come days. I said uh, yesterday that it is a difference between, you know, Ephesians 4, the king's highway to unity, faith and unity in the faith and and to be mature and grow up in unity. And to, to, to what is the expression in English now? To mature man, right? Yes. Yes. So when you see that, hallelujah, you know that you are on the king's highway. God wants you to take steps further on today. When, when you hear what the Holy Spirit says, you know that you are, are, have a listening ear 
and you will be an overcomer. We will see a change that the circumstances, are you led by your circumstances? If you are led by your circumstances, you will see defeat. But if you are led by the Spirit, you will see that you are an overcomer because you can hear what the Holy Spirit says. Do you know that you will have a temporary victory? I have prayed for a lot of people by laying on hands and a kind of, a, that's, that's a second day charismatic church, you know. And a lot of people.